Hey guys, Simon here, and Portal 2! Let's go! Architecture of Portal 2. Uh, new game. Right. So, following on from our architecture tour of Portal 1, obviously the logical thing to do is to continue with the second game. Basically, Portal 2 is just more. More of everything. Compared to the first game. Good morning. You have been in suspension for 50 days. In compliance with state and federal regulations, all testing candidates in the Aperture Science Extended Relaxation Center must be revived periodically for a mandatory physical and mental wellness exercise. You will hear a buzzer. When you hear the buzzer, look up at the ceiling. So this is like the the really basic tutorial, just introducing the player to the controls, but just notice what they're doing here. They're kind of introducing you to the idea that you've been in suspended animation. And uh, what else was I gonna? No, no, that, that's about it. You're in suspended animation, right? So yeah. look up. You will hear a buzzer. When you hear the buzzer, look down at the floor. Look down. Good. This completes the gymnastic portion of your mandatory physical and mental wellness exercise. There is a framed painting on the wall. Please go stand in front of it. And of course, it's slightly humorous because Porto is a a humorous kind of game. And also, they're conveying to you also, you know, right from the very start, that aperture science a on the wall. Please go stand in front of it. doesn't really take regulations seriously. Like they're doing a pretty half-assed job. Art. You will hear a buzzer. When you hear the buzzer, stare at the art. You should now feel mentally reinvigorated. If you suspect staring at art has not provided the required intellectual sustenance. Reflect briefly on this classical music. Good. Now please return to your bed. Right, so I mean, if, you've, if you saw that for the first time ever, then you might think that's kind of funny, although you might want to actually buy the game and play it before you, you know, watch someone else do it. So, you know, it, it's humor, and it's also conveying to the player that after the science doesn't really take regulations or health and safety very seriously, like they're doing a pretty half assed job of making sure that you're physically and mentally capable. And also there's a developer commentary as well in this game, I like the first game, and again, I rec recommend you to buy the game and play through that as well, because you know, it's good to hear the developers actually talk about their own game instead of me, because you know, I'm not Valve, I don't really know what they do in their offices and all that. Uh, they do talk about this being something like a motel room, like a cheap motel room. Well, that's what it's meant to be like. So I guess a bathroom would be there. Um, what else is there to say? The color scheme? Mostly beige and light browns. There's a dark green on the carpet, I mean. Just looking at the color scheme, you can tell that Whoever designed this knows a bit about interior design, because, well, for one, all the colors match, and they and all the colors complement each other, and they're chosen to convey a sense of you know, cheapness, of you know being a fairly kind of plain and boring space. You know, there's no garish, bright greens and and reds and yellows and blues, so you know the, the just the. The art style. I don't, I don't know how many of you guys have studied a little bit of art, or you know, look, or read through kind of art books in, in your spare time. But if you have, or if you do, or if you know someone who who you know studies this sort of stuff, you know, just looking at that, it's, it's kind of obvious that these guys know what they're doing in terms of architecture and design and then all that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's get on with the game and not spend too much time talking about things that don't matter that much. Good morning. You have been in suspension for nine, 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 nine. This courtesy call is to all tests. Hello? Anyone in there? Hello? Any test subject not Are you going to open the door at any time? Hello? So now the game is going to commentate itself a lot, and I guess I'll have to shut up. But you can see a lot of a long time has passed, and and things are kind of messed up. Hola, amigo. Abre la puerta. 
Dom de Esther. No. Um. Anyway, I'll, no, I'll let the game fine. do its thing. It's not like I don't, I, ah! Oh God, you look te um, good, looking good actually. Are you okay? How, are you? Don't answer that. I'm absolutely sure you're fine. There's plenty of time for you to recover. Just take it. Please seat. prepare for emergency evacuation. Stay calm. Stay, stay calm. Prepare. It's all I'm saying. Prepare. It's all fine. All right. Don't move. I'm gonna get us out of here. Oh, you might want to hang on to something. Word of advice. Up to you. The the audio might glitch up a bit in this sequence. You all right down there? Can you hear me? Hello? So the whole room is supposedly moving. Most test subjects do experience some uh, cognitive deterioration after a few months in suspension. Now you've been under for quite a lot longer and it's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. But don't be alarmed, all right? Uh, although if you do if you do feel alarmed, try to hold on to that feeling because that is the proper reaction to being told that you've got brain damage. Do you understand what I'm saying at all? Does any of this make any sense? Just tell me, just say yes. Space to speak? Okay, what you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you just you just jumped. But never mind, say apple. Apple. Space to say apple? Okay, you know what? That's close enough. Just hold tight. All reactor core safeguards are now non-functional. Please prepare for reactor core meltdown. So again, there's the humor. Hey, look, I wasn't going to mention this to you, but I'm in pretty hot water here. How are you doing down there? You still holding on? And this is fairly impressive. The reserve power ran out, so of course the whole relaxation center stops waking up the bloody test subjects. Hold on, this is a bit tricky. And of course, nobody tells me anything. No, why should you tell me anything? Why should I be kept informed? You know, about the life functions of the 10,000 bloody test subjects I'm supposed to be in charge of. Why? It's close. Can you see? Am I going to make it through? Have I got enough space? Uh, just, just got to get through here. Okay, I just got to concentrate. And whose fault do you think it's going to be when the management comes down here and finds 10,000 flipping vegetables? Alright, see, so now I hit that one. I hit that one. Okay, listen, we should get our story straight, alright? If anyone asks, and no one's going to ask, don't worry, but if anyone asks, tell them as far as you know, the last time you checked, everyone looked pretty much alive, alright? Not dead. Okay, almost there. On the other side of that wall is one of the old testing tracks. There's a piece of equipment in there that we're gonna need to get out of here. I, I think this is a docking station. Get ready. Good news, that is not a docking station. So there's one mystery solved. Uh, I'm gonna attempt a manual override on this wall. Could get a bit technical, hold on. Almost there. Remember, you're looking for a gun that makes holes, not bullet holes. But don't worry, you'll figure it out. Seriously, do hold on this time. Right. Oh, there we go. Now, I'll be honest, you are probably in no fit state to run this particular type of cognitive gauntlet. But um, at least you're a good jumper. So you got that, got the jumping on your side. Um, just do your best, and I'll meet you up ahead. Right, so that's the opening sequence of the that's whole game. The Let me just check if there's anything interesting to see here. Uh, what should we talk about? I mean, we... Okay, so we are in a container, and so this, this is like a, a module, a living module. And we can see that the facility is quite large, and there's a large number of... Wait a minute, is that a person? Over there? Or is that like a lamp on the table? Oh, that's, that's just a lamp, okay. So there's a lot of other modules, but apparently the power is out and everyone's dead, except for us. A long time has passed since the last time we were awake. And that's about all we know, and that's weekly. And he talks a lot, so... I guess that means I, I have to talk less when he's on screen. 
And that's the intro. I mean, if you, I don't want to kind of go over it too much or state the obvious, but just consider the information that's been conveyed to us. You know, the time passing, the facility breaking down, and then this guy Wheatley who is helping us but is a bit clumsy and all that. Anyway, so uh, let's move on. Good luck. Hello, and again, Ooh. welcome to the Aperture Science Enrichment Center. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties due to circumstances of potentially apocalyptic significance beyond our control. However, thanks to emergency testing protocols, testing can continue. These pre-recorded messages will provide instructional and motivational support so that science can still be done, even in the event of environmental, social, economic, or structural collapse. The portal will open and emergency testing will begin in three, two, one. Oh, isn't this familiar? Isn't this familiar? If you remember the first game, or if you didn't watch the series on the portal, maybe you should watch that first before you get to Portal 2. And yeah, so it is pretty much the same thing as the first game, or the start of it. Although you'll notice that the, the announcer actually gave a bit more backstory than in the first game. Like the first game, you were just test subject, and there wasn't any explanation of what's going on here. They talk a bit about how everything's fallen apart, maybe some sort of apocalypse going on, and they're gonna test you anyway. So yeah, this is the same room except there's no bed this time, but there's this bathroom, the radio. The radio doesn't play the music. And you know, again, of course, the two portals that you can see at the same time, and the fact that you see yourself through the portal, and the way that introduces you to the idea of how portals work and the fact that you are seeing yourself and that's you and again the bright colors against the relatively dull background I mean even though we're no longer just dealing with the white walls and the black walls of the testing facility like we have the glass we have the, the vegetation we have the sky so there's more colors here now but notice how muted the green is like that really dull green and the really pale blue compared to the bright orange and the bright blue so despite having more stuff and more colors in the environment they still maintain you know the strategy of using the really bright colors to denote the important stuff and then the the dull colors are the background stuff that you don't really need to care about and you know like that that's the exit there Again, it, it's a brighter color, it glows a little bit. So all the stuff that are crucial to your puzzle solving are actually brighter than all the, the background stuff. And the uh, graphics engine looks pretty amazing too. I've actually toned down the graphics because, you know, I want to maintain a fairly good frame rate for the recording in my computer's Q and button-based testing remains an important tool for science, even in a dire emergency. If cube and button-based testing cause this emergency, don't worry. The odds of this happening twice are very slim. Cube and... Oh, it's all closed. Yeah, so my computer's not that great, so I turned down the effects. If you have a better computer and you buy the game, you can see this look even better on your screen. So there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of junk. Although, as I said, it's mostly background stuff. We have these symbols again. Interestingly, you know, remember in the first game there was a symbol on the switch that tells you to put the cube on the switch? That's gone now because apparently it's broken. Okay. That was disconcerting. But the announcer talks about. What does he say? Cuban button based testing, Cuban button based testing. So, I guess by saying that, you know, several times, he's reinforcing the idea that the cubes and the buttons go together. And you notice how the cube changes color, so they've even improved on the, on the visual cues since the last game. I guess the, the improvement in the game engine allows that. Look at just the subtle things, look at that how that glows a little bit because 
the button is actually emitting light. Actually, that's a bit glitchy. Or maybe not, maybe it's meant to do that. Anyway, so it changes color and it lights up a little bit when you put it on. And notice the, the cube is blue, and you know that line there is blue when it's off, and then it turns yellow, and that's yellow when it's on. So again, the visual language that I was talking about it in the first game, how everything is consistent, and everything is color-coded to, to convey a, a message or to kind of give information to the player here, you know, they've even extended that. They've taken that from the first game and made it even more clear and added even more information. Please so note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grill will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. So now, you know, even the cube is glowing, so they've made it even clearer. And he just told you about the, the emancipation field. <laughs> 